most of the stressors that we are studying in the lab, like temperature, oxygen, or pH, all relates to the same thing, which is carbon dioxide. We know that we produce more and more carbon dioxide every year. And if you want to fix these problems, what we need to do is mitigate, decrease carbon dioxide emissions. And we also know that it's going to be a really challenging task as we need to reach large scale collective action, meaning that we're going to have to work at the global scale on a wide range of stakeholders like kids, citizens, industries or policymakers. And all these different people want different things. If you talk to a policymaker, they don't want more problems. What they want is solution. If you want to talk to a citizen, they want to know what's going to happen to things they care about. And most of the time, the science we do is, is producing like a lot of information, but that's not really relevant for this particular task. So it's not really driving the change we want in society. So we were arguing that if you want to be more efficient at reaching impact changes, what you need to do is develop science targeting this goal. And that's not what we do most of the time. So we need to move toward the science that is complicated and not really society relevant to something that is really targeting what people care about, emotions, and have a science that is clear and simple enough. And if you reach this, then you can drive impacts. One example is something we did in my lab where we decided to go into the street and ask people in Sweden what they care about. And one thing they really care about is seafood. And in particular, one species of shrimp the northern shrimp. If you go in every restaurant in Sweden, you're going to have the shrimp sandwich. And this shrimp sandwich is really popular. Everybody loves it. Everybody remember the first time they tried it. And so if you really can show that there will be an impact on, the sh on this shrimp due to global warming, ocean acidification, or the oxygenation, then you will really have an impact potentially. So we tried that. We collected shrimps in the field. We exposed them to different pH, simulating ocean acidification, and we could see that people could actually taste the difference. And because of that, that was a fantastic communication opportunity and we had a lot of impact in the press, on web and so on. But even better, we could show that if the people experience physically ocean acidification instead of just hearing about it, so they had an emotional connection with the stress, what happens is that they are more willing to change. So if you want to be efficient at, at driving impact in society, you have to think about three things. First. Who am I talking to and what do they want? You have to understand the culture of your audience too. What is my goal? What do I want to, to, to achieve? Do I want to make them change and so on? And, and when you, re you have these two pieces of information, what is the most optimal method to reach my goal? Good luck.